So if somebody has contact, they keep it very confidential. And it runs a gamut. I mean, we, you know, there's Hat Man and Shadow People, which I experienced as a kid. And yeah, yeah hold I up. mean, come on, Hat Man, man. Hat Man. That sounds man. awesome. What is Hat Man? Hat Man. <laughs> What's Hat Man? Hat Man is like a dude with a giant hat. Hat, shadowy. That's such an ancient feeling figure. You know what yeah. I mean? That's such a deep. Yeah figure, the guy with the shadowed face with the hat. And I was telling Steve recently about, did you, have you ever heard of Spring-Heeled Jack? I, I hadn't heard about it either. <laughs> yeah, so Spring-Heeled Jack was this creature in London, late 19th century, who could jump over walls, who could jump around. And the jumping thing is a big thing with a yeah. lot of this stuff. But Spring-Heeled Jack could jump over things and he had this incredibly bright light on him and he had these weird hats that shadowed his face and he looked sort of like a gray alien. Yeah. But it was this widely reported thing. Hello, friends. We are back with another spine-chilling, thrilling episode of Chinwag. I am your host, Paul Giamatti, and you are, sir? I am Stephen Asma, <laughs> fellow chinwagger and uh, pubescent boy with breaking up voice. <laughs> it's wonderful to be here with you as you go through puberty, Steve. It's wonderful. Thank you. It's right special here. for me. No, you really have I, you, you have you have dulcet tones, Steve. I really think you do. You have a voice for radio. Way As they used to say in the old days. for radio, thank you. <laughs> Indeed. You know, before we launch into uh, the second part of our extraordinary interview with UFO investigator Katie Page, I would like to, uh, you know, do a little uh, house cleaning, a little business and say, please go to Apple Podcasts and rate and review us. Why not? Just take yes. a, just five minutes out of your day. It's not a it big It really deal. helps. It really helps. Yes. And we know that there's a lot of you guys out there who... I uh, love the sort of topics of UFOs and the paranormal and ghosts, and yet you're embarrassed to admit it and come out on these issues. But here, <laughs> are, yeah. we this, we love you. Yeah. We embrace no, you to our bosom. Yes, yes, you're safe here. You're safe yeah, here. You're, you're safe. Yes, we embrace you to our bosom. Great, Steve. That's going to put everybody off. <laughs> Just five stars, something like that. And also, you know, it's also, we've been, it's been really wonderful reading comments, reading emails. Yeah. We've been getting really fascinating, wonderful ones. And I think we would like at some point to probably read them on the air. I think that's an Absolutely. idea. We have a little something up our sleeves uh, in that uh, regard. But anyway, enough of that, enough of that sort of business. Let's get down to brass tacks. We left you last week uh, with a bit of a cliffhanger, I would say. Uh, we'd been talking about what, Steve? We were covering what? Cattle uh, mutilation? Alien, yeah, alien abductions. Cattle mutilations fascinates yeah. me, and we get into that uh, this time, and it's remarkable. Yeah, and a lot of really interesting information about that. We get into Bigfoot, which I think is interesting, because yeah. who knew, talking about UFOs, we were going to get into Bigfoot, Steve? I know. It always goes to Bigfoot. It and also time does. travel. We're going to get into time travel well, as well. Well, that's we're going to find out, because <laughs> and Hat frankly, Man. yeah, and Hat Man. Hat Man and Shadow People. People, but but that that's coming up. Time travel. Uh, Katie Katie blew our tiny minds by bringing up a little something called Project Looking Glass, indeed, which may or may not have something to do with time travel. Oh, Steve, it's a brave new world, isn't it? It's it really is. a brave new world. I the suspense is killing me, Steve, and I'm sure it's killing you. No, I'm I'm fine with it. Okay. All right, Steve. You're cool as a cucumber, aren't you? You're a block of ice, yeah, Steve. It's fine. You're a mumble evil. You're like Steve McQueen, aren't you? <laughs> Unflappable. All righty. Well, anyway, I'm dying of suspense. Let's pick up where we left off with Katie Page. I believe that there's definitely weird stuff going on. There's all kinds of like, they're developing all kinds of invisible aircraft and stuff like that. I mean, they, they really syndrome. are. And I mean, that shit is actually going on. And I mean, they've done all this crazy stuff, the remote right. viewing stuff. And yeah. they've done plenty of crazy stuff. I'm sure there's guys at the Rand Corporation <laughs> working on time travel <laughs> yes. and shit like that. I mean, they're doing it. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, but, that might have even existed, right? Time Project, travel? Yeah, Project Looking Glass. In your defense. Uh, wait a second. Here. <laughs> well, Project Looking Glass. Yeah, all right, yeah. of course. Wait a second. Just tell me, what is Project Looking Glass? <laughs> what is it? Well, it, it's supposedly that we learned how to time travel, and we were jumping timelines, and it became so convoluted, they had to stop it. 
because it became so complex. Because you know, oh, time sure. is not linear, right? Yes, yeah, time yeah, yeah. is cyclic. You know, it's all out there. So yeah, it's this it's whole all thing. over the place. So there's so many of that. But to your defense, <laughs> well, I, I, you. went, I went. <laughs> I went to Canyon City one day to do a presentation, and. I, I kind of like to arrive early when I go places, you know, typically. And so I was a couple hours early <laughs> and I come into this like building I wasn't supposed to be in. It was a newspaper and, and the editor was there and he's like, um, what are you here for? I'm like, well, you know, <laughs> you're not going to believe this is what I'm talking about. And he was a high, high up in General Electric. Uh-huh. And we talked for an hour and a half. And he basically, I mean, he had high clearances. He basically told me that we are at least 40 years more advanced in our technology and, and propulsion than what people know. Oh, really? So in your defense, That's interesting. a lot of this could be ours. That makes sense because I, the, I see That's those tic, tic-tac, uh, you know, crafts moving around, and I'm like, that looks that like seems, nothing. Yeah. But but then maybe we are that far advanced. And when you, I hear be. you say that, I'm like, oh, well, maybe Well, it, it could is. be that, that could be. we're coming back. We're time travelers coming back. That's that a theory, too. That we've gotten ourselves ahead. I've heard it. Yeah, I've yeah. heard all that, too. That we've we've come back because it's sort of the, the time traveling thing has allowed us to come back with this technology from the future. Right. I think that that like solves like one problem with a bigger problem. That just like <laughs> creates a whole other fucking ball of wax. And that's what happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that is what and then, happens. And then there's Dr. Michael Masters um uh-huh. who talks about the evolution of humanity and how we're evolving and eventually we might become the greys. Uh-huh. Which you know. I've heard people talk about that. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah. The, the, what about the lizard people thing? What is the that reptilians. about? Yeah, the yeah, reptilians. What, what the reptilians. That? The Anunnaki or whatever they're called. Is that what they're called? Isn't there a name for them, something like that? The only thing I want to say about all the different races, because there's different. There's the reptilians. There's the tall greys. There's the short greys. There's the, there's <laughs> sure. the Nordics, yeah. you know. And there's some really unusual ones that are kind of outliers that have, like, elephant noses and different type, you know, my weird guys. Um, <laughs> Two so, guys. But here, here, here's guys. my my personal feeling on that is if somebody is going to tell you, well, that particular type is from planet Reticuli and this and that and that, and this is what they want and this is what their motive is, and blah, 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 I'm just like, right. How do we know? We yeah. don't know. They're good. They're bad. People yeah. like to put them in boxes. Are we all good? Are we all bad? No. Yeah. Like, so I kind of stay away from that and yeah. trying to label because we're just putting our own. So, so there views is, on it. there are like theories about reptilian, you, like you're yeah, not what going is, there, like but the they, bad they think there's reptilians. Yeah, yeah. What is yeah. the whole reptilian? But that goes I'm, back pretty far too, doesn't it? I mean, it, it goes it, back into the it 70s. It really does. And, and maybe there is, maybe there's some truth. I mean, there's the whole big Galactic Federation theory. There's what a secret that? space program. The Galactic Galactic Federation is basically a bunch of different races or species of extraterrestrials, you know, meeting at a table very much like this and and deciding the fate of the universe and p- in the different people on the different planets. And and some people believe, and I wouldn't disagree with them, that as far as evolution goes, we're like the children in the uh-huh. universe. We're, we have, we're, we're at violent. the children's table. We're violent. Yeah. The, but you know, I want, some people we like to gort. paint. Yeah. Gort. Yeah, we need <laughs> but, gort. Yeah. But we have a lot of beautiful Nekko. things, I think, as humans. You know, we have beautiful art and music. And Ooh. so I think we're a really great species. And I think there's people out there like helping us evolve and to get more spiritually well, that's the, that's invited. That's like 2001. That's the monolith. Yeah, thing, yeah. That there's exactly. something beckoning us forward. Yeah. That we need that's beckoning us forward. But, and but part of me believes that. That's a, and, and, I mean, that, that's, you mentioned this earlier, Paul. That's part of this older tradition, which is like in like Celtic traditions, there would be like fairies that would mm-hmm. come and bring you true. wisdom. And yeah. then it, or they'd like, like make your butter and repair your shoes. <laughs> <or shit. laughs> no, I'm serious. Yeah. They would help. Yeah, yeah they would help. Yeah, they would like, help. You know. But then there were also kinds of uh, abductions, <laughs> as it were, like to elf yes. land and yes. to fairy land. Yeah. And then the person would return and they'd sort of have some new wisdom. Yeah. So there's some, not that there's, I think that's happening. Yeah. I just think it's a human psychological phenomenon. This is yeah. my view. Like I think the I think these are all very imaginative, but they're not like but, but, delusions. They're just hopeful thinking. But it's the thing that I I am always saying about the abduction phenomenon that I, I say to myself: Let's just say that it's not objectively happening. It's still interesting. It's still something. It's important. still super yeah. interesting. If it's completely yeah. a product of our psychic apparatus, that's really interesting. It is. Why? And that's John Mack was saying that early on, who yeah. was this Harvard yeah. psychiatrist who was mm-hmm. really an amazing guy, right, who was saying early on, because he wasn't, I think he came to believe it was an objective, actual thing that was happening. Mm-hmm. But early on, his thing was, I don't know if it's really happening, but something's happening. So many people yeah. are to coming people, to me and, and telling me. And for some reason, something is 
incredibly compelling and like mm -hmm. really psychically exciting is happening to these people, right. that's worth taking serious. And I'm going to throw a wrench in there a little bit. Something yeah, I've it. been really interested <laughs> in is this a phenomenon of disassociation and yeah. trauma. So a uh -huh. lot of these contactees and abductees have either um, near-death experiences or they have traumatic backgrounds. And when we are in trauma, when we are in fight or flight, okay, and I had a lot of trauma also as a young person through fights and alcohol, all, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want to get into all that. But when you leave your body, whatever the reason the mm -hmm. reason is, and you disassociate out of your body, yeah, like um, like astro travelers, mm -hmm. you connect into something greater than here, than this universe. And once you're connected into that realm, it stays with you. It's hard to change is something yeah. maybe in your brain. So you can go in your science mind. You seem like a very science yeah. grounded guy. Yeah, no. You could take that though and expand it a little bit further into the metaphysical world. Yeah, I, I know? like this theory yeah. a lot yeah. because yeah. I do know that disassociation among kids who've experienced abuse is real and they take themselves to a place that's not where they're not getting beat up, right. you know. And my own sort of naturalistic view is well that's what that's the beauty of the imagination. Right. But they can have a huge transformative power on your whole life after that. So right. I get that. I, yeah, I just like, like that. the near death experience. Yeah. Are right. they going yeah. somewhere real? Yeah. Or is it in their mind? And does it matter? And does it matter? <laughs> right. Yeah. Does yeah. it matter? Mm -hmm. Well, that's heavy. <laughs> okay. No, it's super heavy. Are there people who are still dealing with the abduction phenomenon like John Mack did? Are there still people approaching it in that same way that are Very like, you know, so. that are open-minded about it? That That's still going on? Because I feel like you just, it was something you heard a lot about. Now you just don't as much. Yeah, no, and it's still going on. It's still going on. Huh. And people are still experiencing the abduction phenomenon yeah. just as much. As a matter of fact, MUFON has what they call their ERT team, uh -huh. which is their experience or resource team. So if somebody has contact, it's very they keep it very confidential. Um, and it's really just a good outlet for people experiencing these types of phenomenon. And, and it runs a gamut. I mean, we you know, there's Hat Man and Shadow People, which I experienced as a kid. And, yeah, yeah, hold I on. Mean, Come on. Hat Man, man. Hat the Man. What is Hat Man? What's that hat sounds man? awesome. What is Hat Man? Hat Man. <laughs> What's Hat Man? Hat Man is like a... Dude with a giant hat. Hat, shadowy, kind of... That's like that dude like, you were telling me about, the spring, spring heel Jack. That's, what's that? spring yeah. heel Jack. That's, the, that's such a sort of... That's such an ancient feeling figure. You know what yeah. I mean? That's such a deep yeah. figure. The guy with the shadowed face with the right. hat. And I was telling Steve recently about, did you, have you ever heard of Spring Heeled Jack? Mm -mm. I hadn't heard about it either. Yeah, so. <laughs> Spring Heeled Jack was this, uh, I think contemporaneous with Jack the Ripper. Yeah. There were these sightings of this creature in London late 19th century, who could jump over walls, who could jump around. And the jumping thing is a big thing with a lot of this stuff, I feel like. In the Betty Andreassen case, there's these hopping aliens that are jumping over things. And in China, in lots of Asian cultures, the hopping ghosts and hopping uh -huh. goblins and stuff like that. But spring Jack jacket jump over things, and he had this incredibly bright light on him, and he had these weird hats that shadowed his face, and he looked sort of like a gray alien. Yeah. But it was this widely reported thing. In, in Victorian era London. So it's the same thing. So all that stuff goes back so far. And he would menace, he would menace women like who were like walking on the street alone. And this is a sort so of he connected it to Jack the Ripper. Yeah. In yeah some it's ways. scary. <laughs> but I, I am interested, like, because we started out talking and you were pointing out how positive many of the people's experiences were. But there is this kind of tradition, like the Whitley Strieber tradition yeah. of communion, where it's a kind of a, a kind of a sexual assault. That occurs, and I'm just wondering in your in your research, is, is that a minority view? Is that a common view? Like, what's going on there? It's one of the views that okay. you know, both males and females are taken, and you know, eggs and sperm, and um, these young girls are you know have missing fetuses and uh -huh. uh, a hybrid program, and yeah. you know, um, so that's a common theme that that's comes out. Theme. And Whitley Strieber is one of the big figures of the abduction. Oh, yeah. Uh, phenomenon. And he, in the, I guess, all his life he'd been being abducted, which he figured out after having a really kind of earth shattering experience, I think in the late seventies or eighties. And he wrote a famous book called Communion, which became a really, it, it was a, wasn't it like a cabin in the upper, in the upper New upstate York New York? Yeah. That's right. And, and there was lights and things like that. And then he remembered through hypnosis, uh, experiences of being abducted by and it was a lot of these different kinds of 
there were the weird little blue men in the weird, like, there's a whole thing with these blue men in these kind of, like, workman outfits, which is a com fairly common one, I guess, that people see. And different grays and tall ones and short ones yeah. and all these different things. And in some ways, it was a really defining text, I think, for the whole sort of abduction experience. One thing I, I wanted to just say is, like, uh, it's not really a question, but it's just sort of a, put it out there, and that is, since so many of the abductions are retrieved through hypnosis, one theory is that uh, they could be actually uh, false memories that are generated in the hypno, you know, the hypnotherapy itself. Mm -hmm. And that's not to discount, you know, the person's actual, you know, uh, experience, but that what they may have had is something traumatic, like a, like a childhood assault or something. Uh -huh. And then in the course of hypnosis, the hypnotherapist might tease out or suggest things such yeah. that then it looks that's like they were abducted. Yeah, out. that's a that's, whole complicated realm, yeah. that false memory that, thing. That is a question I had. And um, when Dr. Leo Sprinkle heard of my connection to the ranch, as he was one of the investigators out there on the property, um, he put me under uh -huh. um, for, I have a like hour and 20 minute recording. It took me like a week to listen to it back. Really? And it was an interesting experience because I, too, like you, I'm like, well, I don't know if I trust my memory. What is this? I don't really consider Hypnosis myself a, a abductee yeah. or contactee. Uh -huh. I mean, I had these, you know, all these unusual things happen to me. So I was curious about it. So I did it. And the process was quite interesting. It's like a deep meditation where, you know, he took me down an escalator kind of thing where you mm -hmm. go deeper, deeper, deeper mm -hmm. down, deeper, deeper down. And I was aware and my eyes were closed and I was aware that I was talking, but I was in such a different place. And he was really good about not leading, not asking leading questions. Okay. Um, but when I listened to it back, there's one part of the tape that <laughs> still creeps me out to this day because uh. my voice literally changed to a little girl's voice. Right. And I say something like, and I wasn't scared. Like, it's just this creepy. Right, and I'm like, <laughs> okay, that sounds me like when I was nine. Weird. And I was also talking like a nine-year-old. Like, I was like, and that, and that, and that, and that. And I'm like, you're not conscious of doing that. And I wasn't conscious. Doing no, it. when it yeah. played back, I was like, "What is that?" Hypnosis alone is such a weird. It's so thing. weird. It's like yeah, it's it's... such a strange thing. I don't know what the hell I think about hypnosis. Yeah. But then, but you know, what's interesting is the whole kind of masking memory thing, or or that which is what you know potentially too is being posited there that it's like the alien thing is a masking memory for some real trauma that right. happened. I, yeah. Whitley Strieber's thing, I think, Strieber. starts almost initially with. Actually, the memory is of an owl, I think, right? in that's his house whole book or something. Camp, yeah, yeah. And it's like, and that's how it starts. But that's the masking memory. Uh -huh. What he then figures out in hypnosis is the masking memory is that it was an owl. Yeah. And in fact, it was a fucking thing in his bed. It was aliens in right. his bedroom. Right. You know, so it's there's layers of, I yeah. mean, you yeah. could get endlessly lost in that thing, I think. So one of my vivid memories in the scariest night on the ranch. And this was at your ranch. ranch. This, this was, was at Albert well, Ranch. Well, the ranch I spent time on. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we were there. It was the boys' mother's birthday. They were playing board games till like midnight. It was really early and the five kids were hanging out in the room and the hum sound comes up. So it's, you know, this low, like, hmm, that's what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. And um, all the power in the house goes out. The brightest light I've ever seen, brighter than the sun, no helicopter nose, no, no sound whatsoever comes through the bedroom window. We're all scared, panicking, the hum, the no lights candles, flashlights, you know, craziness. And all of a sudden that disembodied electrical voice from every orifice of the house comes out. And this is the memory me and my sister have specifically. And what was crazy about it is, so my sister and I remember this really scary night and I get the briefing document and it's quoted exactly what that said. So it was reported in the report. Basically it said along the lines of, we have allowed you to remain your friends will be instructed to remain silent concerning us. Okay. Da, na, 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 na. Uh -huh. And and I have like missing, I don't remember, and my sister can't remember if we like scrambled and got in the car and drove back home, whatever. But what I do remember is when we got back to our house in Inglewood, I walked in the front door and I fell to the ground on the uh -huh. floor and I couldn't speak. Uh -huh. I was like paralyzed. My mom and my sister are yelling, what did you eat? What did you eat? Trying to figure out what's wrong with me. And I remember trying to say peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and I couldn't. <laughs> oh and so I go upstairs. After, this lasted maybe three to five minutes. They finally get me upstairs to my bed, and I had my first full-blown horrible migraine headache where you're vomiting, you have uh -huh. the tunnel vision, uh -huh. all of that. And those went on like weekly or biweekly for a few years, and they were putting me on all these different pills and medications. 
Finally, I went through biofeedback training for a year and got a handle on it. Uh-huh. But these boxes... Um, that was my daytime sighting. So we were in the pickup truck. It was me, the youngest son, and the person my mom was dating. And we were driving in the Ponderosa Pines. There was where you could drive around the forest. Uh-huh. And there was this outbuilding. And we had stopped to get something out of the outbuilding. All of a sudden, that hum sounds. It sounded like a bee, like a, a electric almost. Uh-huh. And the I don't want to say his name. He's no longer alive. But I just don't. I want to protect that family. Sure. They're like, get in the truck, get in the truck, get in the truck. I look back, and it was like three to four feet off the ground in the tree line, and there was this lit box uh-huh. making the sound. Get in the truck. I, we look back, gone. Gone. Box is gone. Now, I didn't talk about that for a while. I'm like, that sounds nuts. But in the reports, <laughs> they saw it in the back of the house, and the under sheriff saw the same Same box and a tree. And so he didn't want to approach the box. He gets his posse sheriff, goes to approach it, and he says that it's like the tree and the box went into the ground. That's from the sheriff. That's in a report? That's in the report. Wow. I've yes. never heard so anything like this. Multiple witnesses. Actually, it's a humming box sounds thing. cool. They, I've never even heard. They, it sounds really cool. They <laughs> yeah. found the, they had a box experience at Skinwalker Ranch, uh-huh. and then Trey Hudson, who has the South Skinwalker Ranch, who's a good friend of mine, um, he had the Fleur camera. Now it's not the same type of box because this box type anomaly three dimensional box. It's sh- like a, a big one, and yeah. what's really interesting, it shows up on the Fleur camera. So they have their team, and they're very they're a great team. They try to debunk everything. They're scientific. They have protocol. He's a military guy, uh-huh. really great. I mean, they have physicists, they have paramedics. These are educated people on his team, and they're watching their the. The people on the team, they go into where you could see it on, and they disappear. We've got more on the way with Katie Page right after a word from our sponsor. And we're back with more Chinwag. Uh, Do you have any interest or experience with ghosts and things like that? Yes. Yeah, right. (laughs) Yes, a lot. I figured you probably (laughs) would, Katie. (laughs) 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 Me too. He's very open to the ghost thing, too. I I 100% believe in ghosts. I'm not a skeptic there. (laughs) Do you connect in any way with the... the I didn't used to, but I do now. You do now. I do now. I didn't used to. I compartmentalized and I kept them separate. Right. And now I'm thinking they're all like this. That's what I keep. That's more and more I start getting getting to that kind yeah. of thing, yeah. that they somehow all seem Inter- manifestations of some kind of baseline thing going on. Yeah. What about this, though? Like, you, you, Steve, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, caught in the yeah. middle of this shit. <laughs> it's just a shit storm of hat I'm man like, and robot <laughs> voices. You just, you're melting down, doctor, <laughs> professor. You can't. It's a shit storm of hat man. Uh, no, I, I, I love this stuff, too, but I'm always, like, looking for another interpretation. Like, if you look at a psychological view it it is still really cool. It would be like, you know, you've got UFOs, Sasquatch, ghosts. I think it's a way in which we are organizing not our belief, not the facts, not our beliefs, but our hopes about the world. Like, I hope the world is a better place. I hope nature is mysterious. I, I hope that I'm a better person. Like, and then all this paranormal stuff comes as a way to sort of channel and organize those hopes. Does, uh-huh. it, does this make sense? And to say that there's some... There are entities that are supernatural that are going to guide us somewhere. Yeah, that it's like, not like it's not just like a machine hurling through space. It's not uh, like a lump of, right. you know, rock hurling <laughs> yeah. through space in a nihilistic it's universe. Just gonna get real, it's all yeah. gone when the sun expands. And yeah, that there's some there's some hope and meaning that would have been provided by traditional religion. But now we don't have that as much. So so in a way, the paranormal is like a spirituality tradition uh-huh. that's emerging this is my i'm working this out right now in this, <laughs> right, in this room. <laughs> oh, yeah. but that goes to that, that idea sense. that we are manifesting something too. yeah yeah we're, we're pulling something out right that is intrinsically there like something. it it's not a dismissive view i have but it's just a little different than you know that there really are aliens visiting us i just that one's that's a hard one right. for me well Explain this then. Like, what about? <laughs> <laughs> really, <me> this. <laughs> <laughs> Explain. I mean, for me, there's so many like synchronicities. Yeah, yeah. And you get yes. into, do we have free will? I mean, yes. this gets yes. deep down in the rabbit hole because you talk about that, right? Synchronicities and deja vu, and yeah. and is there something else beyond our physical forms? And what is our soul? And how yeah. does that interact? And and are we connected to all the this strange phenomenon? Um, and I do believe 
that it's real because I've experienced it. And I, I also believe, though, that people can sensationalize yes. and take things because we love, yeah. we're storytellers. We like yeah. to, you know, make yeah. a story great and that's how we remember it better and all that stuff. So I think both things exist, but I think it really gets into some just deep, deep topics it, of it what is. our soul is and what happens after and who's all out there. Yeah, we, we Paul and I have talked about this before too. Like, there is this tradition that goes back to like like Emerson and Thoreau, and and then like the Blavatsky and the Theosophical Society, and that that your first that first you're a spirit, and then you take on a physical form. Right. But then there's another tradition, which is like the Darwinian tradition, which is you first you're a material form, and then slowly the mind evolves later. And that's sort of how I learned, you uh -huh. know. But you guys are talking about this other tradition where you're a spirit. Pre-existingly, there's yeah. something right. spiritual, yeah. and then it becomes it right. becomes something. Yeah. Here's an interesting thing that you you said something. Sorry, this isn't just me. But you were talking about you said something about the Tubi guys <laughs> looked like looked like AI, looked yeah. like drawings of AI. Yeah. I know. I mean, I, and I don't know if this is any, but I know somebody who subscribes to the notion that AI is some sort of manifestation of aliens in some way. Well, right. That it's going to be some kind of oh. that it's either be guided by them or we're going to manifest something through AI, and they are going to be. Is that a is that is that a, a wackadoodle thing that just this guy I know is saying? No, no, no. That, that's not a wackadoodle <laughs> thing. I mean, there's some theories that there. I mean, you look at Leonardo da Vinci. Uh -huh. You look at Elon Musk. You look at these people that really change things right throughout humanity. And uh -huh. you're like, who's guiding them? What are they doing? You it's like so the star seed idea? Is, is that, that a star yeah. seed um, thing? Or well, something? I think that can be that can connect to that, right? Because I researched that for a while. I kind of got in as my journey took me through diff many different things looking into. Um, one of them was that, like the indigo kids and uh -huh. the crystal kids and, you know, that. And so I do believe if ET, if there's a seeding, if there's a changing of our DNA and we look at Look at our younger kids. So I'm the mother of five. I have uh, four boys and a daughter, well, and they're all adults now, and I have two grandkids. So I'm aging well, myself. Nice. But, well, but, 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 but I look at them and, and their generations, right? And so, I, you know, from 20 to you know, my 35, 20, 35. And these kids are growing up so much differently than we did in the 80s. You know, yeah. I'm a kid of the 80s. And I often wonder, is that some manipulation by E.T., right? Um, are we evolving into right. the AI, the Right, the and this alien, is all being pulled And this is all and that, part of it. It's a positive uh, spin on AI, it, that's for sure. It yes, really that is. it's some sort of yeah. manifestation of that that's going to serve us well. I hope. It's, it's, the positive, <laughs> it's the positive way to go with that rather than it's going to screw it's everybody gonna... the way it seems to be. So, But that is sort of the 2001 it thing is. too, right? Yeah. That, that, that there's an alien intelligence that's guiding us towards a better technological and, and mental and spiritual destiny of some kind that's the that's the whole yeah that's very interesting yeah what? everyone else is doom and gloom on ai so everybody this is, the is only, doom yeah. and gloom so it is a nice way to <laughs> yeah. look at it that maybe it's going to be some positive thing that's going to do something good for us you know that it's going to be a different species that's going to do something positive for I hope. us and maybe we can unplug it or something though you need a way to take them out we're going to converge <laughs> we'll, we'll be I converged I with it, it. I think yeah. it. at some point i do want to talk about the these purported uh, corpses or cadavers of aliens, and I want to talk about that a little bit too. At sure. Some like, what do you think of that? Are, are those things real, and and, and uh, or are those are those hoaxes? You're gonna open up that door. Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, we don't have to go through it yet. If you had this other thing, you know. Well, um, so years ago, a few years ago, so the other so I investigate the ranch, but there um, the Roswell 1947 yeah. crash in Roswell, New Mexico. As we know, there were bodies reportedly being there. One survived. Uh -huh. um, and so there was a rumor, or actually it wasn't a rumor, this general, Brigadier Arthur Exxon. Mm -hmm. Exxon? Yeah, Brigadier Arthur, Arthur Exxon, Arthur Exxon okay. said that one of the Roswell bodies ended up in a mortuary outfit in Denver. Okay? Oh. So a few years back, we get a report coming in from a nice couple out in California who worked at this mortuary. I mean, just trying to a, say just, this question. Just some mom and pop, like, <laughs> funeral home? Well, <laughs> it's, it's not just that. So I've been, I've, been, deep. Yeah, wow. I've been investigating this now for quite some time. COVID shut it down because I've been going to the Eisenhower archives, pulling documents, all mm -hmm. this stuff. But there's a really interesting, and talk about coincidence. 
My mom's living in an independent living home. So what, what happened is there's this vault in the basement of the mortuary where they store the chairs. And it sat there for decades and decades. And the mortician, whom I went and interviewed and filmed, um, was curious. Like, he didn't think there was a body in there. Come to find out, a federal judge appointed by um, Nixon had a hold on this body. Always Nixon. Always Nixon. <laughs> had a hold on this body. It all comes right? back to Nixon. So yeah. curiosity <laughs> kills the cat. And, and my my witness here, my mortician, um, pulls his, he's such, he, he passed away recently, so I'm glad we got the interviews. But he pulls his caper, goes in, opens the vault. Okay, it's sealed, three seals. And he was mortified <laughs> to see a child in there. And he it was... Uh, formaldehyde, all the visceral was removed, genitals completely cut out, orifices for ears, heavy brow. He did not think ET. He didn't believe in aliens. Not. Nothing. Yeah, you, he fine. thought hydro, severely hydrophysalic child or something. Well, he was a hang glider, and years later, him and his wife were in Roswell the hang gliding. Hang -gliding <laughs> the hang gliding mortician <laughs> went to Roswell, learns about this, he, the, the rumor that one of the bodies was in a mortuary outfit in Denver and went, oh! <gasps> That's it. That's what I saw. And he, you know, he's like, he felt he disturbed this thing. Da, da, the, the body has been moved. I think I know I where it say, is, which is a whole thing. Yeah, I right, do. I right. can't say because I can't say. But what's interesting <laughs> is, understand. so I've been, awesome. invest I've been investigating <laughs> yeah. this federal judge. I found out he's a crash retrieval specialist. He's also the infectious disease specialist. He, he did major cases across the country. Come to find out, he, the person who owns the mortuary was a neighbor of Mamie Eisenhower, who's from Denver. They were all 33, the, the federal judge and that they all went to the same Mason Lodge, which is right by Fitzsimmons oh, Lowry. God. So it's this whole thing. <laughs> oh, my God. So if you ask me if I believe the bodies are real, yeah. yes, I do. Well, I do. Absolutely. Holy shit. <laughs> really loud, but clearly some of like that alien autopsy film and stuff is not. That's not. That's, yeah, right. That's, right, that's, uh, that's not real. And some of these things look like it's like the Fiji mermaid or something yeah. with, with the P.T. Barnum yeah. thing. It doesn't look real. But that's the most compelling thing I've ever heard about and this And I stuff. think Eisenhower I've is this a generally known thing? Or are you no, like, this is, you're giving us a news break. I'm giving here. you a news break. Wow. I'm the amazing. chin wag. I'm the chin wag. Controversy on the chin wag. That's amazing. I hate to destroy our, our <laughs> the chin wag uh, news, but what if, like, wouldn't they, if they're just trying to get rid of it, wouldn't it be better for them to just burn it? You know what I mean? Like, well, why would they? Keep it like but I that's guess kind of, but that's kind of classic governmental. Like you got to save everything. Well, yeah, maybe they, I'm always yeah. amazed no, that I, they still use paper yeah. in the government. Yeah, and the fact that they're still, you know, it's always like someday they're going to open the JFK archives, and I'm like, somebody didn't burn all that shit. Yeah, right. That's but it's the point. governmental narcissism that's like yeah. got to keep all this shit. We can't. We yeah. got to tag that and keep it because you don't want to destroy anything. Because I have, I have theories on that. Oh, okay. And so <laughs> yeah. I have a whole, I told you, I, I told you. But yeah, I, you, you, I have opinions about right. everything. Yeah. I, uh, so I have a whole shelf on my, I have extensive library on all things, UFOs, big, everything. a whole shelf is on Roswell. Okay. And, and, and I know Don Schmidt and, and that, but I haven't read them and I haven't read them on purpose because I want to go where my research I leads see. me. Okay. Sure. And so a question I get asked is like, why would they keep one? Why would they not just burn it? Yeah. And why would they? Keep it in the basement of a mortuary. It's like, my theory is it's like hiding a book in a library. Yeah. Okay? And <laughs> yes, sure. I feel That's if smart. Eisenhower actually met an ET That's and they connected, he doesn't, he's going to respect it uh -huh. as a as a living entity. Oh, he's going to give that respect. Wow. That's interesting mm -hmm. to have that empathy for that I and say, so. don't just burn this thing. Right. Like, and why was one body brought to Roswell? Well, I did confirm with Don Schmidt that we do know that um, Lowry was out there, okay, at the Roswell crash scene. But my feeling is, because Fitzsimmons at the time when Eisenhower had his heart attack and he was treated, it was one of the greatest military hospitals in the country at uh -huh. the time. So maybe perhaps there was an something, an organ, skin, whatever, that they had a specialist there at Fitzsimmons, and so they took one there. Why would you put all your eggs in one basket and just send them to Wright Pat? It just made mm, sure. sense to me yeah. that perhaps Take there was a specialist. Else. Get and somebody to deal with this thing. And maybe see it was a special something. I yeah. don't know if they have organs, whatever. Right. And that's why it had all the visceral, all the gen I mean, completely cut out, just gone. Sure. So, and I, I think they didn't burn it because of empathy and because he connected well, to also, it. Yeah. The humanity of the being. There is a um, 
There's a little, there's a really interesting case where they found this small, it's like six inches long. You guys are probably familiar with this. It was in Chile uh -huh. and it was a little fetus sized person. I think I've seen this but it's, thing, yeah. its body was so further developed beyond what a fetus would be uh -huh. and it had this sort of long the miniature head. person. Yeah. Sort of. And, yeah. and I guess like investigation, you know, it, it was celebrated as possibly an alien, but then investigation reveals, it's kind of funny because it reveals that it's human and has human DNA, but it it's also like their explanation, the scientific explanation is so bizarre. It's like, this is a bone malady that we've never seen yes. before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it is just, you know, believe us, that's what it is. It's, yeah. It has that kind of feeling. Are you familiar with that case? I am. Oh, we yeah. just did an interview with somebody, and even though for a while there was a hoax or don't pay attention to this, it's coming back around is as it? very, yeah, like, nope, we it don't know It is really weird. Is. It's super it's weird looking weird. that thing. Yeah. yeah. It's the implant thing, too, is weird. The oh, sort that's of a whole alien. other thing. <laughs> yeah, that is a whole other thing. But wait, what's the implant thing? Well, this is that people are people will have an uh, an experience of some kind. I mean, I, I I'm sitting here explaining. You, you yeah. explain what <laughs> well, it is. Kate. Well, John Lee, or people will have different. You know, whether it's behind the ear, sometimes up the nostril. There's a lump suddenly yeah. or okay. something or a pain show up or on something. In, okay. On X-rays, and some of them have been removed, and they're magnetized. They're this. They don't um, adhere to the tissue like they should, and all this. So they've actually removed them. And, and of course, like with so much in ufology, they're like, oh, well, I did this. They removed it. And now it's gone. We don't right. know what happened to it. But yeah, a lot of people report <laughs> like implants. Yeah. yeah. Um, one thing I did want to ask you about is like can, what's happening now? Like why, yeah. why did it become UAP? Why did they decide we're not going to call it UFOs anymore? And the whole thing that happened with this revealing that there was a small department in the Pentagon run by this guy. A tip. Yeah. yeah Lou Elizondo. Lou Elizondo, who was a very kind of controversial figure. And and then it was revealed that that there had been a small funded department. And all of those things in the past couple of years, uh, all of these different reports were revealed. And there seemed to be this groundswell, a change, a sea change going on and like – Wow, they're all going to admit that this is actually happening, and then it sort of goes back and forth, and now it's just I can't figure out what the hell is going. Now it's quiet. It's quiet again. <laughs> well, it sort of is quieter again, and it's like you know. Then there were these there were hearings, and you and and you had the head of national intelligence, uh, the woman I can't remember her name, just basically sitting there going, "Oh well, yeah, no, there's a lot of stuff we don't know what it is." Yeah, right. And you know, it's just. So I can't keep a track of what's going on right. right now. We just recently had another hearing, and we're due to have another one soon. Um, I'm going to get myself in trouble here, Good. maybe a little bit. But. <laughs> That's what the chin wag is for. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I personally believe, you know, I, I follow it to somewhat of a degree. I was frustrated by that hearing when they're like, rewinding the tape and they the, the evidence they have. I'm like, first of all, learn your history, like – you know, for, that's where we could start is learning this history. I mean, when they said we've never engaged, you know, there's a battle of L.A. We have engaged and all this stuff. So a battle that, that, of L.A. being the battle, uh, there was the big battle of L.A. The, yeah, and we what? were engaging. In I this don't know what that is. What the hell is the <laughs> battle of L.A.? What is the what is the battle? That of sounds point. awesome. That is awesome. Point. To your exactly. point, to I don't know my point. history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. ignorant. Yeah, what is well, that? Was there some like we shot dozens and dozens of rounds at this unknown craft, right? And it when, didn't, when it was it in Los Angeles? Oh, yeah, I knew you were going to tell me the dates. I'm horrible sorry. about dates. I need Dave Marler. <laughs> anyway, like, no. So my point being is I feel like this, whatever is going on recently yeah. with, with the hearings and, you know, they're protecting whistleblowers. There's a lot of good things that are coming out of it because we do have men and women that are going to be protected of it under this new law where they could come forward and not be prosecuted, whatever. But I feel like they're getting... They're trying to get ahead of a narrative. I think they're trying to control a narrative. I think um, one thing that came out of the hearing, which what I perked up when I heard this, is basically like, you know, it could be you could be prosecuted if you're going to talk about your own personal stories, just meaning your average citizen that has an encounter. Basically, they want to kick us all out on the road and they want to take the wheel and control what's happening. We have new organizations coming on board that's taking reports now. So I feel like they're trying to get ahead of something and put the lid back on. So that's why it feels like we're taking one step why? forward, three steps back. It's really strange. Because, yeah. So we're going to give you a little bit, but yeah, yeah, yeah we're going to control it. It is that like truth we're and lies it. thing. Because and then they really have the odd. fear, the threat narrative, which yeah. I, I believe they 
they need that for funding and to get people's attention, how, how the so government high, and the military like, military oh, this funding. could be a threat. Yeah. Um, so that's a whole thing going on. And then there's people believe that this is going to be the next like big COVID thing. We're going to have an alien invasion. It's a way to put in new laws and control and all that stuff. So don't believe it if that happens. <laughs> so, so, oh, I see. So, yeah. so the whole thing is some ruse to just like shut us all down. Control right, people. Like, right. Yeah, okay. They're setting up for something else. For something else. Yeah. But why was the change from UFO to UAP? I just find that funny. And again, is that a way of kind of like, let's not keep thinking of it that way. Let's think of it in this more mature way. Yeah, right. Because That's, UFOs, yeah. tinfoil hats, yeah. Yeah, it has, yeah. you know, the green aliens. It's, Ooh, it's like psychedelics. You know, yeah. Like they don't want to, now there's all this great psychedelic research and they're trying to medicalize the psychedelic substances. And so they don't want to use that psychonaut language of like right. the hippie period. They're trying to rebrand it somehow or something. Yeah. something. And now, a very special commercial interruption. And we're back. I'm wondering what you think and what you think, Paul, about ancient aliens. I actually like this idea. Uh, just, I find it kind of cool that they're, that why are the aliens coming now? Maybe they were here a long time ago. Sure. And there's some evidence of them. Well, what's your sense of that? I think there's a lot of interesting evidence about that stuff and there's a lot of and it's a lot of stuff seems to make sense and i don't know if you know about the dogon people in in west africa yeah. who seem to have had it's it's a group in west africa that seem to have uh, astronomical knowledge mm -hmm. well well out of the realm of what they should know wow. and for a very long time about the star system of sirius mm -hmm. And the fact that they knew it was a double star before anybody right. seemed to know it was a double star. And that in this kind of story they tell in this in this group, uh, that some visitors came from from a, a, a thing landed in, out of the sky and these guys came out and described where they were from. And so that they have this ancient astronaut knowledge wow. that something was given to them. But there is no real sufficient explanation for how these guys how knew that Sirius knowledge. was a double star before anybody really did know right. that Sirius was a double star. So that's a good, that's always one that I think of as a good example yeah. of it. But there certainly are, I mean, it it seems, it's a cool idea. The thing that's interesting is that uh, Carl Sagan, you know, who basically was one of the founders of SETI, which is the Search for Extraterrestrial right. Intelligence, he thought that um, if there were ancient aliens, it would be these weird stories, like from the Bible. And there's sure. a famous Babylonian story that's like yeah. fish so people come out. Well, and, no, and all of that stuff looks yeah. like, yeah. But then it got, what happened is he kind of backed away because like Eric Von Doniken did, you know, his stuff. And right. it got, he wrote all these books and yeah. popular kind of popularized the idea of ancient astronauts. And so then the sort of more sober-minded astronomers sort of backed away from it a little yeah. bit. It's Do you feel that sometimes that like there's some people that are like, you're you're going too far. This is getting too wacky. This is too wacky for me. This is too. Do you have that sensation that it's like? Yeah, yeah, very much. And you know that. And I also, you know, there's interesting people that are kind of pocketed in this field. Kind of, I don't know what they're doing. Um, I don't know. Obviously, the military, like I talked about earlier, they have secrets they need to keep. They want to know what's being reported. But I also feel like, what's really going on here, and why are these people here? But um, yeah, <laughs> you know. So yeah, for sure, you know, definitely. There's some people who go too far. Yeah, and, we, and that's why I try and stay grounded in research and documents. Right, and, and that's an important piece of it because I too, I have people that I've interviewed that I, even though I've experienced so much high strangeness and so many things, shadow people, I've experienced these things. Um, the big basketball blue side orb, which was really that's a whole interesting thing. So once I started. Looking into <laughs> you, you have endless interesting things. Yeah. <laughs> so when when I learned of the ranch and the doctor, I started kind of re you know re look you know investigating the ranch. I'm at my home in Centennial, right? Mm -hmm. And and it's so great that I journaled about it. Hint for people: if you guys experience weird things, whether paranormal, whatever, journal about it. Write mm -hmm. the time, write yeah. the whatever, because you yeah. forget. Our memories are yeah. right. So luckily, I journaled about because I had forgotten the whole piece of the puzzle. I just remembered the big basketball-sized blue orb in the corner of my bedroom. Mm -hmm. But I didn't remember what had woken me up. And what woke me up, my boys were like into Legos. And we had this red Lego bucket. And the Lego bucket tipped over right next to my bed. It was right, So the Lego bucket tipping over woke me up. I wake up and in the corner of my right. room is this blue orb, yeah. this ball. And it just was sitting there. I'm like looking at the cable box. I'm looking at the smoke detector. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> and my husband, I'm a, Steve, Steve, my husband, Steve, 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 wake up. And he wakes up and he sees it and it just goes, 
Well, we saw and at the, that time, the auto did, lights on the house behind us are going on and off. Uh-huh. And so we were both waking up. We're about, what the heck was that? And it wasn't until years later when um, Skinwalkers at the Pentagon come out, came out, that book, mm-hmm. that they talk about these blue orbs. And they've seen it. And in that book, it states, don't assume they're extraterrestrial in nature. Right. We possibly have that technology as maybe a monitoring or some sort of <laughs> surveillance or something like that. Right. And I'm like, what is that all about? Well, isn't ball lightning a whole thing, though, too? That's like oh, a strange here we go. No, <laughs> yeah. no, I'm not <laughs> suggesting. But it, but I'm always <laughs> – sorry. Sorry to bring it all down. But, I mean, ball lightning is a thing that they still aren't entirely – I mean, but that's not in your bedroom. <laughs> yeah, I, exactly. Like it's like earthquake lightning. Boy, that with the Legos falling over and waking and your husband. That's like is... straight out of Spielberg. That's like yeah, a Spielberg movie. Awesome. It really is. That's amazing. That's a, that's... Yeah, so there's that. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to. You 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 saw Hatman and you saw Hatman. <laughs> I on, didn't see Hatman. He's coming back I to Hatman. Saw, and I'm glad I haven't seen Hatman because yeah. Hatman would scare me. Yeah, I would I love to see Hatman. But I have seen Shadow Beans. Okay, there I've we go. I've seen the Shadow Oh, figures. yes, this is a whole other thing. Yeah. Talk about that. What are the that Shadow? Was, that was at the ranch during those ranch years. And I never slept alone. I slept with my big sister. We right. had the bed up against the wall. I'd always, you know, check the boogeyman. You know, you're looking yeah. for the boogeyman. But I would have these shadow beans inside the doorway where the bedroom door yes. was, by the closet next to my oh. bed, and they'd always come in two or threes. Uh huh. What, what do you think um, of the sleep paralysis theory that you're like yeah, sort of not? Yeah, sleep. you're not quite as. You know what I mean? Like right. people feel that they're they're not quite awake and they're not quite asleep, and many people will report a figure in the room. Right. Have you heard that kind of yeah, thing? Yeah, I have, and I think that's plausible. That's I mean, plausible. we do. Yeah, that's plausible. We have sleep paralysis. That's a real. Yeah, thing. so but the shadow person thing is a whole thing, though. Right, and they're not it? ghosts and, to me. I mean, they right. were not. I believe in ghosts one hundred percent. But sure. these shadow figures were not ghosts. No, that's a different ghosts. thing. But yeah, it wasn't see like those, my dad But don't or, people or, see those things out in, uh, 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 like out in the uh, out in, oh, street, yeah. in the street oh, yes, and yes. stuff? I mean, yeah. people are being followed by these shadow yeah. beings. Yeah, that's a whole other phenomenon. Yeah. And that sense of being watched that went on until I was in my late thirties, early forties. Really? Do you, do you, have you ever had an experience like that? Of feeling like I'm being watched? Yeah, or shadow beings. Yeah. No, I don't think. Well, I mean, yeah, sort yeah. of. I, they're definitely. I would. I. I was in a. I, I lived for a while in a place in London oh. where there was definitely a sense of something in, uh, for several nights running in the doorway, that was indefined. That was shadowy yeah. and was there looking into the room, and it would sort of be there. I would wake up and it would. It was there, mm-hmm. and um, I never actually connected it to that until mm-hmm. you're telling me this now. Yeah. So that's actually so. But the feeling of being watched. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, yeah. I, I have that feeling that, yeah. too. Yeah. I have that all the time. Right. I yeah. wonder if there's um, people that uh, – do you think that there are people that are being chosen to get certain revelations or that that people – there's a certain kind of person that is um, more more of a believer personality and they're just more sensitive and can perceive things more than the average person? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, that somebody's sensitive to it more yeah, so than right, other that people. Somebody's more sensitive. I think there definitely seems to be some people who are. Yeah. yeah. Something I found and I found because that's a question I often have and I don't think there's chosen people. Okay. I think I think we're, we all it's like we can all work on a, like a muscle. We can all become more psychic or intuitive mm-hmm. or all these things. We all have that ability to oh. remote view and all that stuff if we work at it and practice and read about it just like anything. But what I have found interesting is it seems like a lot of abductees and contactees, they are really more open-minded people. They're not dogmented into certain religious. They're more open spiritually. Mm -hmm. And I think that that whoever might be contacting the these individuals, that's why they they're kind of, and, yeah, right, because they're, they're more they're open already, and accepting of it. They're yeah. more already open and not dogmented. Cause as, and that you feels know, very you know, religious to me too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like a religious person would be like, you. once you're open to it, the spirit will move through you. Through you. And, and the person that's close to it, the spirit's, you know, you're still waiting. Like you're not yeah. there yet or whatever. And some people don't want to see it. Right. Like, they're just wanna, so yeah. grounded in our physical reality. Yeah. And that's why I think we incarnate, right? For our five senses. Because when we're in spirit form, we can't do this. This. We can't taste food. We can't have these emotions. And that's why we're here. And some people are just so grounded into that 3D reality. Yeah. They don't want to go out and experience yeah. Hatman or anything. I don't want to. <laughs> you know, so forget it. <laughs> so you won't see it. And maybe that's part of manifesting. They don't want to experience yeah. Hatman. Yeah. Well, we you have been extremely generous with your time. <laughs> with your time. Oh, yeah. You Thank really you. have. Yeah. It's been yeah. fun. Yeah, really, fun. really. This is amazing. And I learned a lot. Well, that was something. 
down the old rabbit hole, right, Steve? Yeah, that was amazing. Crazy. Yeah, we got we got a lot of useful info from Katie Page there. Uh chilling and weird. Yeah, some I, scary hat, stuff. Hat, hat man, that's it. I'm 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 with hat man, I'm good. I'm done. We need a good new night, Marvel nurse. like a new Marvel character, hat man or something. <laughs> A franchise. Fantastic. Listen, I would play Hatman in the Marvel franchise. Okay. So let's put that out there. Listen, folks, thanks for joining us. Once again, we love you. Please yeah. email us, drop your thoughts in the comments, give us a review, etc. We would love to hear from you. Until next time, adios from the Chinwag. Chinwag is a production of Tree Fort Media and Touchy Feely Films. Hosted and executive produced by Paul Giamatti and Stephen Asma. Executive producers for Tree Fort are Kelly Garner and Lisa Ammerman. Dan Carey is executive producer for Touchy Feely. Our series producer is Rachel Whitley Bernstein. Our associate producer is Andrew Miller. Original theme music by Luke Topp with additional music by Via Mardot. Oscar Guido is our executive in charge of production. Tom Monahan is head of audio for Tree Fort. Animation created by Alex Sokol. Audio production, supervision, and editing by Maxwell Carney. Additional audio assistance and mixing by Jeff Neal. Video editing by Brian Barcheski. With additional production management from Renee Levesque. Clara Wong is Celestial Empress of Benevolent Knowledge. Lastly, for more information, go to chinwagpod.fm and find us on Instagram or TikTok at chinwagpod or on Twitter at chinwag underscore pod. <laughs>